All right. Hello, everybody. Just a quick one tonight. Hi, I'm Lisa Galt. Um, I have been a consultant for eight out of the last 10 years with Thermomix. Uh, I live in Bibber Lake in Perth. Um, and tonight I am doing basics. So I'm going to make some tendery paste and then talk about how um, you can use tendery paste in different ways. And then I'm going to make some butter and then some flavoured butter. Um, yeah. So now our tandoori paste. It actually has two of the ingredients is garlic paste and ginger paste. They are actually recipes within cookie dough. But um, I'm going to do a shortcut tonight. So rather than make the garlic paste and the, and the ginger paste, um, what happens is you make the two pastes and then you use what you need for the tandoori paste. And then what you've got left over, um, you pop into ice cube trays, stick in the freezer. Once they're frozen, pop them in a baggie, ready to go when you want to use them. Um, I make this often enough that I'm just going to shortcut it um, and go from there. So what I've done is I've actually weighed out the garlic and the ginger that I need for the recipe. Um, and so then we're ready to go. So start cooking. So what I've actually got is I've got my coriander seeds, my cumin seeds, my cardamom pods, 10 whole cloves. Now I'm going to show you the cashmere chili in a moment. I've got brown turmeric in here as well, uh, cinnamon, salt. I'll put the brown sugar in a sec. Actually, what I am going to do, I am going to pop out and I'm actually going to chop my uh, ginger and garlic first. Now the garlic and ginger paste a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of salt in it. So I'm just going to chuck some olive oil in there and then a little bit of salt so that it is it is like the paste. And then I'm going to chop it for speed tan. And, oh, and we'll see how we've gone. So that's five seconds. So even though you follow a recipe, you've also got control of what you're doing. So, yeah, so that's made my my two paste sort of already. Might just do it for another five seconds. Um, and like I always say, there's no firm mix police. I can hear the light done. Um, so you're still in control of your recipe. Okay. Let's just flip it up a bit. So then what I'll do is I will put in the other ingredients that I need that I've already pre-done. Then I'm going to go back and show you the cashmere chili. So it's two tablespoons of cashmere chili powder. So I've got normal curry powder there. Not sure if you can see the colors. So I've got normal curry powder and normal chili powder. I'll hold those two. You can see it there. And then we have our cashmere chili powder. So you can definitely see the difference between the three. So when that recipe asks for cashmere chili powder, um, go and grab it from the uh, Indian shop. Although the Indian grocer, although I'm actually pretty sure I saw cashmere chili powder in one of the Woolies the other day. So we're starting to get more of the spices that we use a lot. So two of those. Then the other ingredient you need to buy from a um, Indian grocer is, no, go back, 
is our six car black cardamom pods. Now let me show you the difference between, I'll put it to here, but I'm not sure if that's videoing the second camera. That's your normal cardamom pods, little green ones, and that's your black cardamom pods. So the black cardamom pods have a real smoky flavour. So if you use normal cardamom pods in this recipe, you're not going to get the the uh, flavour that you really want. So it's two, four, six. Next one. Then we have got 60 grams of brown sugar. So you can actually make your own brown sugar. I'm not sure if you knew that. Handy hint for young players. Um, I had some left over from something else. Fifty-four. Fifty-eight. Close enough. Then hundred and twenty grams of tomato paste. So we normally get these ones and then write the date on the top. That's been a real handy thing in our household because we use quite a lot of tomato paste. As you can see, just from my tandoori paste. And we use the tandoori paste in our uh, creamy coconut chicken curry that we uh, make it at, is one of the choices to make it demos. Uh, 120 grams of garlic paste. So I've already put the garlic in there and I've put already put the 80 grams of ginger. 200 grams of olive oil. That's quite a lot, um, but that's cool. Uh, it's well worth it. So what I do is I make the paste and I know that each... Uh, chicken curry recipe that I do has 90 grams of tandoori paste in it. So this makes about just over seven batches of 90 grams at a time. There we go. So then what I do is I actually get these little containers and stick a sticker on the front that says tandoori paste 90 grams and I stick them in the freezer ready to pull out. Um, that recipe also uses 90 grams of coconut cream. So whenever I use coconut cream and I've got some left over, I also pop it into 90 gram lots uh, in my containers. Then I just have to pull it out and away we go. There's a couple of other recipes that use a little bit more, but that's okay. You can use one in a bit and then just put the rest of it back in the freezer. All right, set measuring cup. So this is another one where it's going to go for like, a minute, I think, 20, oh, 20 seconds. All right, speed nine. Okay. Now, I did try and get fancy one time uh, and make a double batch. Trust me, don't. <laughs> make two batches. Take the time because it's not that long. You can see it's only taken me a couple of minutes. Um, do not do two batches. It doesn't uh, mix well because the bowl is too full. So let me just that and then... There is our tandoori paste. And trust me when I say it is utterly lickable. Uh, just pop a spoon in there and go for it. It's absolutely delicious. So other things that you can do with the tandoori paste is that there's actually masala bread rolls, um, which you're making bread rolls and actually putting the, uh, the tandoori paste in the bread roll, which is very cool. Um, there is also a couple of other recipes. And another thing that I like to do is I like to um, marinate uh, chicken tenderloins. 
in uh, in my tandoori paste and then cook them and use them in wraps. So you've just got your your chicken, however you like it, with wrap and then put salad in it and it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, that's another idea for it. So same with your other pastes. Make it up and then um, put it into portions. Just have a look at the recipes that um, would use that paste uh, and divvy it up equally. So I've done the, um, I did the red, Thai red curry paste the other day. So I've done the same with that. With Just check out my favourite recipes. Because you're never going to, because, of course, we don't uh, use preservatives um, and it usually lasts about, um, so you can cover with extra olive oil to preserve, um, but I prefer to stick it in the freezer. That way it stays fresh. Okay. Now I've got it in my week. I'm going to make butter. Uh, it's actually crazy surprisingly easy how easy it is. So there's butter. So our ingredients are cream and chilled water. Um, so what I'm going to do, I forgot to fill up my jug with my chilled water, but that's okay. Start cooking, insert butterfly whisk. So I wanted to show you, I've got two butterflies. One you can see is a little bit green and the other one is black. So the one that's green, I've actually used uh, used it in a curry. So all I need to do is stick it outside in the sunshine uh, for about uh, an hour in winter either side or half an hour in summer and it will come back to our beautiful black. Okay. Oh, insert the butterfly. So we insert the butterfly. You can see the blades there. The highest blade with the one with the lump above. I actually put it to the left of the lump and turn it a little bit left and then it's stuck in. Now, saying that, 90% of the time that you put the butterfly in, there's already food in there. So best guess is usually good enough. Um, right, so when you're getting your cream to make your butter, I use either Harvey Fresh or um, of course I've got the name of the other one, um, the blue and white one here in Perth, uh, whipping cream. Try not to, well, it makes, it's more difficult to make butter when it's, um, if you use double cream or UHT cream and things like that because they're actually made with added added additives um, that make them harder to go past the whipping stage and turn it into butter. So I'm going to add my cream. So what we get from the, the end of it is butter and buttermilk. So buttermilk is fantastic for making your scones. You can put it in your cooking, that sort of stuff. Now, it also depends. So insert measuring cup. How long your cream paste takes to change into butter depends on how old the cream is. So... A couple of Christmases ago, um, I got some cream and it took less than a minute to turn into butter. And then another time I bought cream and it took two and a half minutes to turn into butter. So don't expect that every cream is going to turn into butter in the same time frame. So it's got one minute here. So the key is that if you go over a minute, you will turn cream into butter. So I'm actually going to just dial up my timer just to give me a bit of wiggle room. So I've put three minutes 40 there and we're just going to go to speed four. Now what happens, you're not going to be able to hear it, although what I will do is I'll come over and change the sound. There we go. So that possibly you might be able to hear the Thermomix. And so what happens is you'll hear it change into cream, so whipping cream. So I'll show you that, and then we'll do the butter. So it says put on by two minutes extra. 
if necessary. So swatch that until it actually ripped. And you can actually hear it when it changes. Um, it's a bit of a practice thing. The more you do it, the more you hear it. So there's my cream into whipped cream. You can put a little bit of icing in there, a little bit of um, vanilla bean paste is also good mm. for your desserts. All right, let's keep going to four. So I can hear it now. It's a uh, sound is hard to describe. So let me show you the second bit, and then I'll show you again once it turns into butter. So that is now quite sturdy. Right, back to speed four. I'll sit close to it. It's a, it is definitely an actual thump. It's rattling a little. And there we go. Now it sounds kind of like a washing machine. When you hear the, the whir and then the washing machine, Voila, there's our butter and our buttermilk. So what I'm going to do is it says that you can use your basket uh, to separate it, but I'm going to show you a little trick. I can get my butterfly off. I am going to, so you want to keep the buttermilk because that's actually one of the expensive parts. Or expensive ingredients. So you take off that first lot of buttermilk. There we go. Then I am going to use my spatula. You can put this in the basket and then squeeze it. But when I find my spatula, there we go. What I'm actually going to do is just press it using my spatula really hard. So there's still a bit more buttermilk there. That's good. I'm going to be hard to hear you. A little bit of butter dropped in that's all right I'll use a nut milk bag later to separate it okay so I've pressed a lot of my butter out then I'm gonna get it says 500 grams remove butterfly whisk I've done that using the simmering basket so chilled water I'm just gonna go over to my fridge or I'm still talking now the key to having your cream you need to have your cream cold and your water cold is because if you have the cream and the water warm, you're going to end up with mushy butter, not solid butter. And it's absolutely a pain in the pizza to work with. Trust me, I did it once. Um, and that's where most of my hints and tips come from, is from the fact that I've made mistakes. <laughs> And so I'm able to tell you. So we put 500 grams of chilled water ish, whatever I've got to. Oh, look at that, 5010 or 510. Right. Now, the handy or the rule of thumb is that so add the butter back in if you've taken it out and used your um, basket to squish it out, insert the measuring cup. And then it's just five seconds speed four. Okay. 
and that washes it. So then the rule of thumb is that each time you wash it, your butter will last an extra week um, in the fridge. I know uh, lots of people have butter bells and stuff like that. So now, if you look at that, I'm not sure if you, you can see the water. So every time you wash it, the water gets clearer as well. Now we don't put this with our buttermilk because it's it's dirty water as such. So I'm just going to put it down the sink and then I'm going to uh, squish it again like I did before. So I'm not sure if you can see, but I'm just pressing it up against the side of the Thermomix of the bowl. So then it gets, it presses the water out. So of course, if you've got the fancy little um, butter pat things to squish it, but try and squish out as much as you can. And then you can wash it again, of course. There we go. But I'll just show you the one wash. And then there is my butter and my buttermilk. Um, so what you can then do, let me take the butter out because I'm going to make uh, sun-dried tomato and basil butter which I will do something with. So other things you can do as well is you can buy a cream on sale and you can actually put cream in the freezer or you could make the cream into butter and then put the butter in the freezer. Uh, so it's a great way to save money as well. Let me pop that in my bowl. We go. And there's my butter. So what I might actually do is halve the recipe so that I've got half butter and half flavoured butter. So using the simmer and basket, squish it out, do it again. Now there's a video here showing you how to roll the butter into a roll with your um, glad wrap for putting in the fridge or the freezer, use as needed. So I'm just gonna go back to my week and I'm going to do butter with sun-dried tomatoes, basil and parmesan. So that's pretty cool. So if I'm gonna halve it, we wanna do 25 grams of, I might just get, no, that'll be all right. I've got a new bowl. As you know, I'm a little bit lucky. I've got four bowls and two thermomixes. Pretty cool. Right. So I'm going to do 25 grams. 28, enough. Fish. Insert MC. So here's another lid that could do with going out into the sunshine. Turn black again. Some people um, uh, worry about it. Some people don't. They just keep using the um, the lid and stuff until they fades away. The colour fades. Okay, so ten seconds speed. Ten, of course, to do our parmesan. Next, so 10 grams of, oh, 10 fresh basil leaves. Right, I had read it as 10. So there's our parmesan. And that's, so then we want five-ish. Insert measuring cup. So speed eight, two seconds. So quicken. So to stop the chiming, 
on your machine, you can just press the screen, press next or press the stop button. You've got options. So there's our basil chopped in with our parmesan. Then we want 50 grams of sun-dried tomatoes, but I'm going to do 25-ish. 30-ish. Insert measuring cup. So speed five, three seconds. Scrape down the sides. So that looks and smells yummy already. And then it's 200 grams of unsalted butter, which I'm going to put 100 grams in. Okay. I'll just zero it. All right. 100 grams of butter. There we go. 80. There we go. Perfect. Set measuring cup. So 20 seconds reverse speed four. So with this, the time doesn't really matter because that I've halved it. But if you're actually cooking and you've halved ingredients, you do 20% less cooking time. There's a lot of cookie dough recipes now um, that you can adjust the um, your serving sizes, which is awesome. Okay, serve as an accompaniment to bread. There it is. How cool is that? Um, and the other one that is fantastic that I saved is the herb and garlic butter. Oh, garlic and herb butter. You actually put the garlic chives parsley in the bowl and then it, oh yeah, butter, lemon zest and salt. Yep, so that one's also absolutely delicious. Um, go back. Awesome. Uh, so there's the masala bread rolls that I talked about uh, to use your tandoori paste in. They're absolutely delicious, but as always with our uh, breads, there's no uh, uh, ingredient to uh, keep it. I used the word earlier today, but that's all right. Um, and so you pop your bread that you don't use today in the freezer. And then when you pull it out again, it'll be beautiful and fresh. Um, all righty. Well, thank you very much for joining me for this short uh little video today uh don't forget that every second thursday we do these zoom videos and i hope to see you at the next one lisa b will be back from new zealand the lucky duck uh and we'll see you then Alrighty, bye